rise. Everybody budget. motivate. What do we do? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the June 29th Board of Selectmen this meeting. We are going to start off with a public hearing, RSA 674-40A. Street exception acceptance, and we have <laughs> 13 <laughs> streets, and we're going to read them all. So it might take a few minutes, but we're going to do them all at once. <clears throat> so I'll read a few of them, and then I'll pass it around. Number one, to accept as a class five highway under the provision of RSA 640 no 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 six seven six seven four colon colon four zero. A, the following name streets platted by the Planning Board on July 28, 1953 and June 6, 1958 and recorded with Rockingham County Registered Deeds as Plan 02048 and Plan 02696, a portion of Carolyn Ave and a portion of Carolyn Ave and Thayer Roads. Number two. To accept as a Class 5 highway under provisions of RSA 674-40, the following named streets planned by the Planning Board on March 26, 1956, and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds, file number 02320, Ridgeview Terrace. To accept Class 5 streets... <coughs> Uh, class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674-40, the following street named platted by the Planning Board on September 9, 1956, and recorded the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as Plan 02480, Elaine Street and Richard Street. Yep. You want to? Uh, four, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674, colon 40, small a, uh, the following named portion of streets platted by the Planning Board and recorded at the Rockingham Registry of Deeds. Godfrey Avenue, platted June 1, 1956, plan number 02311, platted May 16, 1957, plan number 02592, Josephine Drive, Platted September 8, 1955, Book 1368, page 0185. Platted April 5, 1957, Plan Number 02592. Platted October 8, 1956, Plan Number 02473. Platted October 6, 1956, Plan Number 02475. Bourne Avenue, Platted October 5, 1956, Plan Number 02473. Number 5. To accept as a Class 5 highway under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named portion of streets platted by the Planning Board and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as indicated. Josephine Drive, platted September 8, 1955, plan number 2312. Bourne Avenue, platted September 8, 1955, plan number 2312. Godfrey Avenue, platted September 8, 1955, plan number 2313. Number 6, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674, colon 40, small a, the following named street platted by the Planning Board on July 17, 1958, and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as file number 02697, Quinlan Lane. Number 7, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named streets platted by the Planning Board on June 23, 1961, and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as file number 2525, plan number 8341, Por portion of Lock Land, now known as Edgewood Drive, Lock Lane Extension, now known as Laurel Lane, and Morningside Avenue, now known as Morningside Drive. Number eight, 
to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a the following named streets platted by the Planning Board and recorded at the Rockingham Registry of Deeds Longwood Drive, September 19, 1962, plan number 03359. Burgundy Drive, September 19, 1962, plan number 03359. Portion of Seavey Street, September 19, 1962, plan number 03359. Evergreen Road, September 19, 1962, plan number 03359. Heather Lane, September 19, 1962, Plan 03359, Portion of Longwood Drive, June 14, 1963, <coughs> Ro Roman 5, 1674, Page 470, Plan Number 59, Portion of Heather Lane, April 20, 1966, Plan Number 674, Number 9, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named streets platted by the Planning Board on May 25, 1964, and recorded at the Rockingham Registry of Deeds, Drawer Roman 3, Section Roman 1, Plan Number 225, Wentworth Avenue and Colby Street. Number 10, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named streets platted by the <coughs> board on October 15, 1965 and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as Drawer Roman 3, Section Roman 1, Plan 559, Colonial Circle and portion of CV Street. Number 11, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named streets platted by the Planning Board on October 15, 1965 and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as file number 02997, portion of Carol Ann Avenue, Wingate Street, portion of CV Street. Number 12, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named street platted by the Planning Board on September 28, 1988 and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds as D18550, Wigwam Circle. Number 13, to accept as Class 5 highways under the provisions of RSA 674 colon 40 small a, the following named street, platted by the Planning Board on September 16, 1988, and recorded at the Rockingham Registry of Deeds as plan number D18494, Elm Drive. That was a mouthful. So we'll open up the public hearing. At um, 710? Yep, 710. Come in. Uh, <clears throat> Chairman, members of the board, um, as part of our ongoing process, periodically we review streets in town that we have no acceptance for, and we do research at the Registry of Deeds when we have the opportunity to do it. All of these streets, uh, and I've got about six more already upstairs, uh, that we found uh, in the last couple of days <coughs> have um, been constructed after being platted by the planning board and in accordance with RSA 674-40A, once they're platted and recorded the registry of deeds, the Board of Selectmen can, by statute, accept them as public highways. That acceptance we have no record of in the past, so we're putting these up for acceptance now so that our bookkeeping and our record keeping is correct. And Mr. Chairman, all of these streets have been serviced over the years by town waste collection and snow plowing. Right. So we'll open it up to the public. Does anybody from the public like to speak on this matter? Good evening. Uh, my name is Doug D. Silva. I live in one of the affected streets. And uh, I looked over that RSA and it looks like that improvements in the area can't be made unless the RSA is followed. Am I right on that? Appro improvements and amendments to the area, to the streets, this. require that a RSA be followed. That's basically the gist of it. Uh, to become a town-owned street or a public highway, yes, that's right. correct. So I'm assuming that there was an oversight on the part of the town to fail to register that, uh, caught by the fact that you were doing the uh, gas line work. Am I right? Actually, no. We have a program to try to find all the streets that are not okay. listed as accepted, and that's how it came up. Okay. 
Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else wishing to speak? Anybody else wishing to speak? Okay. Uh, we'll close the public hearing 7 at seven twelve and bring it back to the board. Jim. Nothing. Just clean it up. Get it done. Yeah, I appreciate the research. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. The only thing I saw is on number seven. It said a portion of Lock Land. I know. That's supposed to be Lock Lane. Lock Lane. Lane. Yeah. yeah. That was the only thing I saw. Yep. So we'll need a, um, a okay. motion to accept these streets. I'll yes, so sir. move after subsequent to the public hearing. I will so move that we accept the thirteen items on the list. I'll second. Have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, now we have the public comment period. Anybody from the public wish to speak? Anybody from the public wish to speak? Okay, I'll bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Jim? Nothing right now. Mary Louise? Um, I think uh, I'm pleased to announce that the uh, Conservation Commission, uh, with the hard work of the Conservation Coordinator, has been granted the, um, has been given the grant by the Piscataqua Region Estuaries Partnership uh, for uh, pro the project that they put forward to strengthen Hampton's commitment to better floodplain management and implement positive measures to reduce flood risks. And this uh, helps to give us credit uh, toward the uh, uh, gaining points on the flood program. So very well done by them. And one other thing, uh, we received, or the chairman received a letter dated June 19, which I thought was interesting, and I don't know if you gentlemen have taken a look at it, but this is from the um, Bradstreet Road uh, individuals who are talking about uh, uh, structure that was damaged and needs to be replaced, and I, I would like to uh, discuss that with the manager at some point in time. There was an accident, there were two stone edges at the beginning of the road. Stone head wall. Head walls, and some uh, accident damaged them, and I think uh, the person who caused the accident should have themselves or their insurance replace that. I, I don't think it's appropriate. We are chasing their insurance company. To okay, because I thought that was a very good letter, and yeah. they, that neighborhood deserves to have that. <clears throat> and I did I did talk to that gentleman myself, and and yeah, uh, assured him it would be it would be corrected. Excellent. We are chasing the insurance company for that payment. When that comes in, we'll be yeah. correcting that. Excellent, because I hate to see neighborhoods <clears throat> dis disadvantaged by things that happen like that. Oh, Thank absolutely. you. Mr. Mead. Okay. Next thing we'll have is a concern agenda. <clears throat> you want me to read it, Rusty? Would you like to read it? I would be. I would to. love for you to read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number one, Hampton Cemetery deed for David A. Pignato. Fourteen uh, is... Fourteen come from? Oh. Anyhow, Dance Hall Permits, Victoria Inn and Pavilion LLC, Street Closure Permit, St. Cyr Drive, July 4th, 2015, Solicitation Permit and Raffle Permit for the Professional Firefighters of Hampton, License for mm -hmm. Coin-Operated Amusement Devices, Seacoast United Sports Club Incorporated, 311 Winniconnet Road, and Funorama in the Casino Building at F Street. Request of no objection for outdoor service of alcohol at Smutty Nose, five outside areas, which have been documented on maps, 105 Toll Farm Road. It's not Toll Road, by the way, gentlemen. It's Toll Farm Road. Farm. Seafood Festival utilization of town parking lots, September 11, 2015 to September 9, 13, 2015. Municipal parking lot on High Street after 5 p.m. Friday the 11th, and the Old Town Hall parking lot after 5 p.m. Friday the 11th. And that does it. I make a motion we accept the consent calendar. I have a motion to accept the consent calendar. Is there a second? I'll second it. Have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next thing we have on um, here. Before you oh. move on, may I just mention, because I was in with Christina today, and she had a call from an individual. And I'm sure she ran it by you, Fred. There are potential problems sometimes when residents request closure of a street yeah. to have a neighborhood celebration. But sometimes not all the neighbors agree with that. Mm -hmm. And they have been complaining about things put in the road 
which is a problem because that's a hindrance to fire apparatus, etc. So I believe Christina has added a little language in the street closure permits that would stipulate that things are to be kept on the side of the road, out of the way, so that fire apparatus can get through in an emergency. Ambulances and police too. And yeah. the other thing we're adding to that is that we've we've discovered that in a few cases people have actually moved out uh, portable fire pits out of the street to yes. cook with. <laughs> and and our only concern with that is that it shouldn't be on the street and on the asphalt, and it shouldn't be near a gas line. Right. That would help. <laughs> That's a thought. Good idea. Okay, so now we have the approval of minutes. We have February 9th, 2015, as amended. I will be happy to move, and I want to explain to you guys what happened. I had a call from a member of the public who was interested in the fire department um, fee, new fee schedule. So I wanted to know when that was approved. So I said, okay, I'll look it up, and I looked it up, and I couldn't find anything and I looked in the minutes so I found the chief's memo that he put out to us um, on February 10th saying that he was prepared to implement the fees that we put in place so when I looked at the minutes of February 9th I figured he he knew what he was doing which he did so when I looked at the minutes of February 9th that section was omitted so we're correcting the minutes of February 9th to get in the information on the actual motion to approve the fees right. uh, that the chief asked for for the fire department. Okay. How's that? And there was a public hearing associated with Oh, that. yes, and there was a vote. Right. But the, the minutes as put in there didn't reflect that. Right. So we have a motion. In the, is there a second? A second. <laughs> All those in favor? Very good. Thank Unanimous. you. Uh, we now have the minutes of June fifteenth. Also move. Moved. Anybody second? And any corrections? And and a second. I had something in here. Oh, on page seventeen of eighteen, um, it's talking about uh, item thirteen: collection of refuse waste on Litchfield Drive. And wait a minute, I'm sorry, it's not that. It's the Eversource, the one twelve above. Warranty deed for conservation restriction acceptance to Conservation Commission from Eversource Energy. I, I just had one question on that. Yeah. Does that require public hearings by this board? No. Oh, okay. It I does just, not. Okay, I just. It does require your concurrence for the Conservation correct. Commission to 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 receive. Correct. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't skipping a step. No. Nope. Okay. We did check it too. <laughs> okay. Well, you never know. But we had the same question because none of us memorize the statutes. We just know we got to look. Okay. Any other corrections? No, or sir. Errors or omissions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we'll go on to appointments. First one is Christy Pullman, Finance Director. Good evening. Hi, Christy. All right. Even though June is almost over, I'm here to do my May financials. <laughs> Uh, so it's the fifth report of 2015. Uh, the target expenditure is 41.67%. The month's total income was 744000 Motor vehicles came in at 324000 which was over target by 94000 <laughs> Other major contributors to the month's uh, total were payment in lieu of taxes for 120000 that was related to the next era settlement from 2014. We had interest on taxes at nine, almost 100,000. Building permits at 22,000. Departmental income at 44,000. Parking lots at almost, it was 23,900. Franchise fees at 58,000. And the real estate trust at 38,000. At the end of May, the operating departments without uh, debt service but with open POs was uh, at 40.1% <coughs> of budget, which is under the month's target by 368000 The majority of the departments were running under, tar under the target of 41.67. Um, and we'll continue to report on any line items that are over tar significantly over target, but uh, are not like related to like a quarterly or semi-annual 
uh, payment. Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, Supplies and Expense Lines are running over target. In the Assessing Department, the Contracted Services is over budget by 39000 MIS, the four equipment related accounts, they are not running um, over when you combine them. They are currently at 40.33%, which is just $1,000 under the, tar the uh, target for the month. Planning Board is over target as a whole department at 41.82%. In general government buildings, heating fuel is 79.79% spent. Cemeteries, their contracted services is over budget and their electric is at 79.6% spent. Police Department is at 36.35% overall with the open POs. Some accounts to note here are under crime control and investigation, training and recruitment, under traffic control and patrol, vehicle maintenance and intoxilizer, under support services, vacation wages, and supplies and expenses and under police stations and buildings, the OT wages and heating fuel. The fire department is at 39.3% overall with open POs. Some accounts to note here are suppression OT wages, communications, uh, rentals and leases, and under fire stations and buildings, electric, water, and heating fuel. Highways and Streets is over target, uh, is at 59.84% that's still mostly related to the snow and ice removal. Um, some other accounts to note are administration, overtime wages and heating fuel, rentals and leases, supplies and expenses, diesel fuel and vehicle maintenance. Municipal sanitation is, re is running below the target at 36.06%. Some accounts to note here under administration is hired equipment summer, under solid waste collection is vehicle maintenance, under landfill operations is groundwater monitoring, under the transfer station, OT wages, heating fuel, and supplies and expenses. Animal control is uh, running below target, but the OT wages are at 78%. In culture and recreation, some accounts to note are under administration, the OT wages and the telephone line, and under maintenance of parks, uh, heating fuel. At the bottom of page 15, the 2014 encumbrances are showing that 58% have been expended to date, and we're still working to clean up all of those uh, 14 purchase orders. In the special revenue funds, uh, the recreation, the beach sticker donations year to date equal $8,430 with $4,872 uh, being awarded in scholarships. The cable committee received uh, the franchise fees for the second quarter and that was $19,350. Private uh, detail activity level is low but is increasing as we get into the nicer months. And under the wastewater system development charge, we have, um, in the month of May, we collected $15,960, and the new balance there is $104,000. And I just looked today, and in June, uh, we've collected over 40000 already for the month of June for that wastewater system development charge. So that is all I have. If anyone has any questions. Do you have any questions from the board? Mm -hmm. Jim. Go Mary Louise can start, then I'll go. I love that charge. Well, that's giving us money that we wouldn't have had for the new hookups going to the wastewater treatment system. Um, on the expense summary section, Christy, mm -hmm. uh, we're under by 368000 mm -hmm. So that looks a little better for us, I think, trying to handle the budget. I do have some things for you in here. On page three on the revenue report, um, we've received 66,684, so we're at 15 odd percent, but we're just starting the summer, so I think that's really going to balloon um, once we get the parking lots in full swing. Uh, at the very bottom, is that supposed to be debt insurance or debt issuance? I couldn't figure out what that, that very bottom line. Other I think the R is an error. I think it's supposed to be debt issuance. Issuance. Yep. Okay. Because sometimes when you I looked at that refinance, wondered, I wondered if that was a typo. Okay, and I have marked a couple of other sections in here. 
Page 10 of 16. That's highways and streets. Third line down overtime wages. Um, budgeted $17,983, I spent $14,343, so we've only got $3,600 left in that. I was kind of surprised that that is that's lower than I would have expected due to the storms. Um, then down on uh, paving, under paving, we really need to put in our proposed budget this year at least a dollar or a hundred dollars on that line mm -hmm. for future use in case we need to feed in uh, stuff in the operating budget for the paving. And on the bottom of that page, sidewalks, I see that 26,000 sitting there year after year after year after year. We're not sealing sidewalks. We're not doing sidewalks. That's extra money, but it always annoys me to look at that line. On page 11 of 16, there you have more, the overtime wages for the winter under snow and ice removal and the salt. Although the salt shed looks like it's about half full right now, so okay. hopefully we'll do a little better when we go into the fall. And at the very bottom, uh, groundwater monitoring for the landfill operations. Um, any reason why we, we budgeted 2000 and we've spent 3500 Was there some strange situation that... In the actual proposed budget, that line item was higher, I believe, Fred, because the oh, new okay. so groundwater... Yeah. Since it's the default budget, yeah. then we did... Okay. There's new regulations, I believe. Fred probably knows. And oh, okay. there was a new... Con yeah, there, there are new regulations. Okay. All right. And then uh, on page 12 of 16, sewer treatment, the second line, wastewater treatment plant maintenance. Um, are we going to be... I hope, please, using some of that money that is sitting there looking nice for the ventilation so those poor men in the wastewater treatment plant can breathe. That's our, that's our plan. How soon? Well, I, I'm uh, not pushy or anything. No, I understand. Uh, <laughs> as soon as we got our new assistant director on, when that, when that happens, we'll be able to shed some of that load over. I mean, those... And get those, get those plans done and get that, get out, get that out the door. And while I'm on the subject, congratulations, and I had a chance to congratulate him personally today, Mike Doobie and the wastewater treatment oh, yeah. plant crew. Congratulations. They've been recognized by Aquarian. <clears throat> they run a great operation. I'm terribly proud of them. I'm sure we all are. And uh, that was a, a really nice, uh, I think there's a sign upstairs that I, Mike was putting up today so the public will know. Thank you, Christy, very much. Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for your report, Director. Uh, given the denial of the request by the State of New Hampshire for uh, our request to use uh, 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 undesignated fund balance, for the next meeting, um, perhaps, uh, could you do some financial forecasting mm -hmm. on what those numbers are really going to look like as we whittle down the budget uh, and uh, give us uh, and shed some light on what your uh, opinions are and how that's going to crimp our budget. If you look at, like when Wilson just mentioned, the uh, uh, public works lines, uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars have come out of that, that budget line and we're over. So if you can do that, that's great. Secondly, uh, for the next time you come in, um, and it's, it, you could probably answer it now, but you can do it next time, is uh, with the state at a budget impasse in terms of our very limited revenue sharing to include rooms and meals, uh, will there be any effect on your cash flow by the timeliness or uh, ill-timed uh, manner in which they pay us, what little they do. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddell. We'll let Christy finish writing. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, done? Yep. Thank you for your report. Did you write and chew gum at the same time? Well, I, you know, <laughs> I don't want to rush her, you know, because I ask her to speak slowly for me, so. Um, yeah, it looks good overall, right? Mm -hmm. But we do know, like, as uh, Selectman Dean said, there are going to be problems, right? And I just, I just think we ought to stay on top of that and make sure, especially, you know, when you're talking about heating in, in many of the departments being over already, mm -hmm. and we still have a, a lot to go next year in the heating departments and stuff. And when we talk about the uh, public works, the 305% over on the snow and ice removal, I mean, that's going to present problems down the road, I'm sure. And I just want to make sure that we're on top of that and, and deciding what we're going to do with the budget before we get to that point. So, yeah, it's good reporting if you can keep uh, track of that. The overtime in the animal control, do you know what that's 
because winter of winter plowing. Winter plowing? Well, when it was plowing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Probably is my guess. Would be okay. my guess. They do right. plowing and um, snow blowing and stuff down there. Okay. The chief right. the just look in the back of the room. Right there is it plowing? I believe it is. Plowing. Yeah, it's plowing. Okay. We're going with plowing. Okay. All right. I just I was asking you the question, <laughs> so I was waiting for the answer. I yeah. like it when you guys like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the report. It's a good yeah. one. All set. Thank you. Anything okay. else? I'm good. Very All good. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Next one up is Chief Sawyer from the Police Department. And Deputy Hobbs. And Deputy Hobbs. Good evening. Good evening. Our topic is the uh, parking enforcement issues that uh, were raised <coughs> in the uh, sessions we had with the public coming in. Uh, I don't know if everybody got a copy of the memo I wrote, but if yeah. you'd like, I can read it in to the record. I think you should read it to the public, okay. Chief. This was uh, a memo from me to the manager, uh, dated the 25th of June. I'm requesting permission to hire up to five non-sworn part-time employees for the purpose of parking enforcement. This request is being made in response to the concerns that were aired at the open forums hosted by the Board of Selectmen regarding parking issues at the beach and North Shore areas. With a reduced number of sworn officers working this summer, the utilization of parking enforcement unit would also free up those sworn officers for more critical law enforcement <coughs> needs throughout the community. The Hampton Police Department has utilized a parking enforcement unit in recent summers, and we found them to be highly effective, showing an increase in the overall number of parking tickets issued and revenue received by the town. The funds necessary to equip the unit would be minimal to include a college golf style shirt, with identify, uh, both identifying the individual in their employment with the town and the capacity of parking enforcement. <coughs> An appropriate ball cap would also be issued. The cost of these items can be absorbed in the current police department budget. The need for transportation will be facilitated by items such as bicycles and vehicles that are already in the police department's inventory. I'd re recommend four of the positions be at a pay rate of $11.18 per hour, which is commensurate <coughs> with the pay rate for the part-time communication specialist. A super supervisory position paid at a rate of $11.75 per hour, for the fifth position is also requested. Supervisor would be responsible for rescheduling uh, for scheduling the unit based upon the needs of the department and to ensure that none of the other unit uh, members exceeded the appropriate hours established by town policy for part-time employees. The anticipated salary costs can be absorbed in the current police department budget. Due to previous discussions regarding park, the parking enforcement unit, the department has received many inquiries regarding employment. If approved, the department would move quickly and make all efforts to have the unit functional in some capacity by Monday, July 6th of 2015. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. And what area would they cover specifically? I mean, would they Got cover those streets that we had been talking about? They would be authorized to cover any parking issues in the town of Hampton, but pr primarily they would be handling the mm -hmm. beach issues and the North Shore issues that we discussed. Okay, okay, so the numbered streets and stuff like that? Correct. That all right. And when you did this before, the revenue? Uh, I'll just give you some quick numbers. We, um, we were unable to have the unit last year due to budgetary issues, um, but we actually dropped off on income by 10000 from thirteen to fourteen. When we dropped the unit in fourteen, we dropped 10000 in revenue. Um, so if you go back to 2012 when we had the unit, we had revenue of $52,890. 2013, we had forty-four thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars, and then we dropped off on fourteen at thirty-four thousand seven hundred fifteen. So they pretty much pay for themselves. Okay. And did you have less complaints when you had them? Do you think? Um, no, the more tickets you write, the more the it depends what the complaint is. Is it a complaint because I got the ticket, or a complaint because I want a ticket issued? <laughs> it, it really depends. Yeah. The the complaints about you know the the primary complaint we get is folks being parked in resident parking. That, that's a huge complaint. It really gets people upset. So when somebody goes in, they see a car that doesn't have a sticker and they don't see that nice orange sticker, uh, orange ticket on it, they get upset with us. These guys handle that pretty well. Now, if you're one who got a ticket or in an area where sometimes, it, it's, sometimes it's hard to tell in some of those areas where to write the ticket, and my yeah. rule has been write the ticket, we can always take it back. Yeah. Um, and that's what we do. And we do, when we have these uh, folks out there and they're aggressively enforcing the parking, we do get an increase in complaints in that area. 
But again, we're very liberal with that. If, if somebody has an issue, they bring it to our attention. It's a reasonable issue. Uh, we'll change it to a warning and, and move forward from there. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Uh, I'm prepared to uh, move, and I know Mayor Louise is going to want some questions to, uh, to um, accept the uh, uh, plan as articulated in the 25 June 2015 memo from Richard Sawyer, Chief of Police, to Fred Welsh, the town manager that he expounded on right now. It's going to be great for law enforcement, especially in those troubled areas. We're going to have painting, no parking here to corner for the time these guys get Public out. Public Works is working on that, yes. Ah, bless you. I love the way you think. This is great. You know what occurred to me when I read your memo? Maybe some of these nice individuals might be candidates for special police officers in the future. That, that has happened in the past, um, and it's, it's a way to get people into the department for us to get a chance. Kind of a low-key <coughs> way to uh, recruit. You may see some of the people that are um, uh, coming in are people that are just starting to get that interest in law yeah. enforcement. It's a good way for them to get exposed. Though, so. I love it. Great job. I'll Thank second you. Phil. And my only comment is we uh, there are some times that we have parking issues uptown in the uptown area and the town parking lot up here too and that, that will cover this too. absolutely we have a vehicle just so you know what we're doing I uh, the manager and I have spoken uh, we had an ambulance uh, that we were using as a kind of a command post issue that needs a lot of work done to it it's not worth the money that we would have to put into it so we're going to decommission that vehicle I'll be coming back before you uh, in the coming weeks to get that uh, solidified and we're going to maintain one of the older units and make that a part a uh, unmarked parking enforcement vehicle so we have those issues where we need to get a little bit farther in distance we have the vehicle it will not increase our rolling stock very clear radio on that. in it uh, we'll have a radio in it so they have contact with with dispatch but it will not increase our rolling stock it's an older vehicle that will not be used in patrol so I'm comfortable with it even with the miles on it it's still a good vehicle and now these people although they're not sworn officers they they're going to be taking up jobs that will leave the sworn officers more time to do other stuff correct well, I think uh, you're seeing that as a national trend with with the expense of what it takes to recruit train and retain sworn police officers we're trying to find ways <coughs> to utilize part-time personnel to take away those sometimes they're clerical mm -hmm. issues and things to keep the officers out on the street as opposed to being tied up with dealing it and I, I try I try not to minimize parking but in the world we live in Parking tickets are a minimal thing for us. We're more worried about more serious issues in the community, and this frees up the officers for those things, and that's really what we're trying to achieve. Absolutely. Oh, one more quick one. Resident parking enforcement, too? Resident parking enforcement? As far as the resident lots, like at the bottom of Kingside, absolutely. That, that's the one we said when we don't, if we're not out there, that's the primary complaint. Yeah. When we're out there, it's, yeah. I shouldn't have got a ticket for this. It's, I love it. That's where we're going to go with it. All right, so we have a motion in, uh, by... Selectman Bean to accept the police chief's recommendation. And we have a second by Mary Louise Wolsey. All those in favor? Those are opposed? <coughs> Unanimous. Very good. Thank, Thank you. Good evening. That's all yours, Rick. Thank you. Next, we have Diana Martin, director. Park and Recreation. How are you this evening? Good, thanks. No games? No games this week at all. Good. Take the 4th of July week off. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so I just want to give my report tonight about what's been going on in the Parks and Recreation Department. And I don't have my glasses so I can't see this, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Um, in parks maintenance, we have two employees working the season doing the mowing of the ballparks, trash, general maintenance. Try these. <laughs> you guys aren't. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. How do I look? It's like rusty. <laughs> um, the toddler park has been cleaned up of weeds and trash. We have fixed the dugouts and done some of the painting around the fields. True Green Chem Lawn has started their season of maintenance to the town hall, gazebo, and the tuck field for the season. We have put up all the trash cans and recycling around the parks and parking lots. They've been painting ball fields for the Co-Rec Softball League as well as the Men's League uh, softball games daily and for Babe Ruth. 
We've been mowing the fields and picking up the trash around the parks. We have scheduled the ball field lights for Eaton Park, those new lights that we got last year, and they're working out great. They're a huge um, benefit to the players, and they really are great in our, in our park. Brings the park to the next level. We've done some maintenance around the tennis courts and the volleyball courts, putting up the nets for play. As well, we have completed the bid for a scare fire in hopes of ordering one soon. We've also completed the bid for the bus and hoping to order one of those soon. In the parking lots, the Ashworth Ave parking lot opened up in March <coughs> this year, and all of the lots officially opened this past weekend for the season. So far, the lots we have made $61,936. This is actually a week late, too. We've, we've earned a little more. But last year, at the same time, we opened in April, and at the same time, we had we have made forty-eight thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars. We've done all the training and paperwork for the rehires and the new hires, and everyone is doing a great job so far. For recreation programs, we scheduled the fields for use for the softball, baseball seasons, as well as soccer and tennis. The seasons um, for some of the activities are winding down, but we have had more programs start up as of last week. We've completed all the paperwork and training for our camp counselors as they started their jobs last week. Our Co-Rec Softball League and Men's Softball League are both underway. We've had very few rainouts this so far this season, so we've not done much uh, rescheduling, and I hope that I just did not jinx myself by saying <laughs> that. The Cape the Two Sports Program has finished up for the school year. We've had our annual June Senior Citizen Club meeting and luncheon catered by Wilbur's Restaurant and fun was had by all of that. Our department bought Red Sox tickets for the 2015 season. We've already gone to the trip to Yankee Stadium, but we still have tickets for July 3rd game at Fenway Park. The tickets are $60 and we're, I think we're in section 40 of the bleachers. And I know that the Red Sox kind of stink right now, mm -hmm. but it's 4th of July weekend, so it'll be fun just to go to Boston for the 4th of July weekend. So again, they're playing the Houston Astros, who we've never seen up here as far as the rec department. It's this Friday night, July 3rd, and the bus will be leaving at 3.45 for a 7 p.m. game. So there's plenty of time to hang around on Yawkey Way and have a hot dog or sausage before the game. Uh, we've added new fitness classes, which include Zumba, Zumba toning and strength, and stretch and sculpt and you can check those out in our brochure for times and dates and it's seventy dollars for a ten class pass or sixty dollars for seniors we just had our trip to lake winnipesaukee for a boat ride with lunch at hearts turkey farm and everyone loved that trip and asked us to do it again we have also set up a number of summer programs and camps that are on the website and in our spring summer brochure these include Tuck Field Summer Day Camp, Surf Lessons, Archery Lessons, Challenger Soccer Camp, Watercolor Classes, Field Hockey Camp, Lacrosse Camp, Grant State Track and Field, Lego Robotics Theater Camp. We have two basketball camps, Flag Football Training Camp, Tennis Lessons for both children and adults. And we're currently taking registration for all of them except Tuck Field and Surf, which are both full. We have a day trip to New York City set up for Saturday, November 21st, and the bus will be leaving at 6 a.m. and returning by midnight. The trip is $60 per person. This is a day trip on your own to visit the theater, Christmas shop, visit museums, or dine out at many of the fine restaurants in New York. The day is yours to plan. We have set up a trip to the theater production of Cinderella at the Boston Opera House on Saturday, October 10th. We'll be leaving the Old Town Hall parking lot at noon for a 2 p.m. show. We have less left mezzanine seats for the show. The fee is $130 per person, which includes the show ticket and your coach bus transportation to Boston. We've set up a trip to Boston for the 100 Years of Disney. This is an ice show that follows. Uh, that show is February 21st, 2016, and the tickets are $60 and are on sale right now in our office. The Strawberry Festival for Seniors is set up for Tuesday, July 14th at the Victoria Inn. Tickets are free and seniors can come by our office to get one for the event. Wednesday, July 1st, we have a trip going to the American Textile History Museum and followed by lunch at the Cracker Barrel. This trip is $30 for residents and the price includes admission and transportation to the mills and your lunch. And then I had written that we had our Kids Run the World 5K this weekend. Yeah but the weather was um, 
really bad and so we decided that uh, it was too dangerous to have people out on the streets with the wind advisory so we're going to try and reschedule that that road race for probably in the fall and we're currently taking registration for our flag football leagues we have three leagues the third through fifth grade sixth through eighth grade and high school and registration is 65 for the season season starts in the middle of august so we're urging people to come in soon to get the team get on a team before we have to cut off registration which will be at the end of july and then for lifeguards unfortunately this year we only had two lifeguards apply for the position so we will not be having guards at place cove or sun valley then we have posted both the beaches with no lifeguard signs on duty. And that is all. Here you go, Rusty. Thank you. Questions, <clears throat> Mr. Waddell. <laughs> I wasn't going to let you off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Great super report. I mean, you, you guys do so much. It really is <clears throat> just super to have you in town doing this. Uh, it's a shame about the lifeguards. But I saw that Massachusetts was having the same problems. They Everybody had, is. They had yeah. all the signs on Route 95 advertising for lifeguards, and they and they ended up hiring a whole bunch right at the end, though. I don't know where they came from, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's the most best-paying part-time job yeah. for the summer. I don't know why. Yeah, it used don't to be a desirable job, and yeah. I guess they're just not out there anymore. But uh, maybe yeah. hopefully it's cyclical and it will come back around again. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But your camps and all your summer programs are getting signed up pretty well. Mm -hmm. That's good. And it's too bad about the race. <laughs> Sorry, I called your house at 6 a.m., but I didn't want Nancy anyways, to come worry. out. <laughs> but it was too bad. I mean, you, you couldn't do anything with that weather. That's yeah. for sure. Thanks for the report. Mr. Bridle? No, good report. Uh, the parks look wonderful. Thank you. Um, I've had the opportunity on many times to visit Kids Kingdom over the past month or so, uh, along with some of the other parks. Uh, they all look good. Uh, it is too bad about the lifeguards, but I know uh, Rye is having the same problem. Yeah, I called them, there. actually. And, uh, right. He's having a, a, a real issue. So it's it's not just us that's having this issue. It's It's everybody. But hopefully people will be smart. Realize that there are any lifeguards there and well, let's see proceed accordingly. Yeah. So, thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, do you have a price to take down that one remaining tree at Eaton Park, the one that's in the way? At Eaton Park? Yeah. It's in the way of the lights. I oh, no, it's already been taken care of. It's already all It's set. already been taken care of and it's already been paid for. somebody took down the wrong tree. They did, but they came back. They actually donated a tree back to us. Oh. And um, that's been planted, and they also um, came back and trimmed the other tree. Excellent. Yep, it's all Excellent. done. Yeah, very good. Very nice report. Are we going to do the bus um, bid? Not tonight. Not tonight? Not okay, tonight. that's just informational? Yep. Okay. We'll be back to you. Okay. So Mr. Possible. Bean. Director, thank you. I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And thank you very much for your report. We appreciate it. So all are most of those things uh, selling out, like the trip to New York and the uh, different events that you have going to Boston? Yeah, the Boston trips and the New York, the New York City day trip that we have is very popular. Very popular. So, and it's early right now, but people start thinking about it in the next couple of months because they want to go Christmas shopping in New York. The trips to Boston, the Red Sox, they're killing us the last couple of years, but um, so that one's not selling out. I do have some tickets, and that's why I'm saying, like, fun to be in Boston on Fourth of July weekend. <laughs> but um, as far as the theater productions and stuff like that, yes, those sell out. And actually, I didn't even mention it, but we have about six. We have one um, theater production in a gunkwit. Nice work if you can get it. Yeah. And uh, we also have um, like five productions at the North Shore Music Hall. And those are all starting to fill up too. Good. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Yeah. you. Bye now. Moving on to the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I'm very pleased to announce that the Department of Public Works Wastewater Treatment Division has been selected as one of Aquarian Water Company's 2015 Environmental Champion Awards. The division was selected to recognize their efforts to protect and preserve our local environment through their work with the w in the w at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the town was awarded a five-year solid waste has awarded a five-year solid waste contract to waste management for solid waste recycling uh, and bulky waste. 
The town is also awarded a five-year trucking uh, contract to, for trans to transfer, transport solid waste, recycling, and bulky waste to Commonwealth Waste Transportation in Peabody, Massachusetts. And I'll make the comment that uh, because we rebid this, <coughs> excuse me, those costs came in mm -hmm. about $250,000 over what we've been experiencing for cost for solid waste disposal in the town. Did you say over? You mean under? No, over 250000 Saving. Savings. We're always pleased to save money. Um, Property Liability Trust has indicated that they will be filing a new, uh, to renew its license to issue insurance in New Hampshire as a pooled group insurance entity. So we'll wait to see what happens with that <clears throat> because we are otherwise preparing to bid. Uh, DES has issued an emergency permit to permit the town to secure a washout at the Winnicunnet Road Bridge. And for those of you who may have been down there and, and taken a look over the bridge on the um, south side, uh, we have a major sewer manhole interceptor there, and it's completely washed out. So we've received special permission to fix that prior to July 1. So and we're, we're trying to accomplish that now. Uh, I'd also make the observation that um, I received this today from Public Works Department. Uh, public works will be closed on Friday, July 3rd, 2015. Uh, there, however, there will be no change in rubbish and recycling schedule for the holiday weekend, Friday through Sunday. Also, the transfer station will open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And they wish everybody to have a safe holiday. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions for the town manager. Mr. Bridal? I am all set. Thank you. Mrs. Wilson. <coughs> Wi-Fi on the beach, do we have to do anything about that? I understand some person or business is going to be putting Wi-Fi down there. Is that something the planning board looks at for towers or appurtenances on the buildings? Uh, what, the five, first five minutes, five free, and then they bill you after that, whatever? I guess it's quite a... There is some sort of a billing regiment that goes with it, but I, I've seen no applications come before the planning board for towers or anything of that nature. Okay, so it's something that someone's working. I just don't want it to slip yes. through without us knowing what's going on. Down I there. agree with that. No question about it. And and uh, I bel I'm not sure they have to file with the planning board because I don't believe they have to put tower up. It could be that any of this, the, the local towers in the area will be uh, enough to service that requirement. Yeah, I was wondering about that when I read that article in the paper. Um, I have shared with the manager over the past week or so uh, the complaints that I'm getting on a residence A structure that has a certificate of occupancy for rental, but the uh, neighbors are being caused a great deal of uh, irritation. So uh, Fred and I discussed, and he pulls things out of a hat and so we're considering the possibility of uh, presenting a housing standards ordinance for the 2016 warrant to uh, help so that we don't have eight individuals renting a house in residence A and causing all kinds of problems for neighbors so we'll be discussing that as time goes on. Dog licenses, Fred. Uh, I saw the list, what, 456 unlicensed dogs and 73 of those from prior years. Right. May, will the town clerk's office get upset if we make a suggestion? When I looked at that list really quickly, I, I saw at least one person on there that's deceased. And the death certificates and stuff go through the town clerk's office. Not all of them. No? Because... Depends on where they pass away, and sometimes well, they're recorded in another town. Because oh, I was going to say, it might not hurt to check something, you know, like that. They do try to keep a close eye on that stuff, yeah. but if, if the certificate was not filed here, yeah. then we don't know. But that's a horrifying number of animals, theoretically, that are in town and not being um, licensed. Actually, our, our biggest concern is not only are they not being licensed, they may not be receiving rabies vaccinations. Yes. So. Well, that's mostly the reason, I guess, for it is. for licensing them. Um, we received the legislative bulletin number 25 for the, from the NHMA. Okay. As they said this is maybe the last bulletin. But a couple of things jumped out at me, and I don't know if you gentlemen have had a chance to look at it yet, but on the bottom of the first page, it says... Um, 
that Governor Hassan has vetoed the budget, primarily due to concerns over the failure to fund the contract negotiated with state employees, the fiscal impact of business tax cuts included in the budget. That really got <coughs> 10A up. And the legislature's refusal to reenact the Medicaid expansion program scheduled to expire at the end of 2016. Uh, I hope the legislature gets back to work up there and does something uh, useful. The poll utility valuation bill, I see, is off the radar for the moment. They'll probably introduce it again. But I do think those legislative bulletins are handy for us. Um, flood letters, Mr. Manager, sir, please. We're, we're going to have those out of here prior to the 15th of July. Ah, that makes me happy. And Comcast has requested to commence <coughs> negotiations for renewal of the Comcast contract or setting up a new contract or whatever. And we have a time frame roughly on that? that? That is on your agenda for discussion tonight. And, and I'm hoping uh, that because they have requested this, I believe it's two years before the expiration of the current contract, Good. The that we should be able to get it at least in this millennium. Okay. And I want to confirm for you and the board that the non-union pay raises have been paid prorated from April 1st up to the current date. As so ordered the, by the board, yes. So the motion that we took uh, has put the wheels in effect. Yes, ma'am. And that's taken care of. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your report, Mr. Welch. Uh, kudos for staying on the uh, uh, PLT. And... Uh, and hopefully that remains a viable market. And I, I've read your letter, I know the board has, uh, is uh, our uh, legislative delegation in support and uh, knocking on the appropriate doors and if, if we liaise with them to make sure that's moving forward. I certainly hope somebody's knocking on the appropriate doors. It would help <laughs> us to no end not to have to increase taxes in order to have insurance. And that's exactly the yeah. position we will be in if, that, if they're... Uh, license is not renewed yeah. and notwithstanding that the great work that Dave Lang did for for many uh, years up there and exposing some of the inefficiencies if you yes. will um, uh, that that is a viable market and if you couple that with uh, the massive consolidation that will occur in the healthcare field you'll have two or three maybe four huge players and there's going to be very little competition mm -hmm. and yep. when you have that type of restriction prices are going to go up and uh, we, we really need that. That is an insurance product and uh, I, I have read that the insurance department isn't eager to do it. Concord is an interesting place as we all know but it would be nice if we could keep that market going forward and if you can let us know uh, anything we need to do uh, please let us know. We'll keep you on tap of that information and we can thank David again because I received a notice from the uh, uh, PLT that they will be processing this year's reimbursement to the town soon. Wonderful. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, um, just it wasn't an incident, something that you probably mentioned before and I forgot or something. But Exeter Road, what, how's, what's going on there? Not enough. All right, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> we uh, were scheduled for some time after the 4th of July to pave it. Um, the problem really is 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 multifold. Obviously, our vendor, uh, who will be in town later this week to do the scheduling with Public Works, uh, has been experiencing some trouble because we can't stop the rain, and it only happens on business days for some strange reason. Uh, every time it rains, they have to stop operations because it cools down the asphalt too much. Mm. So, they are planning to be here. Uh, I can't give you an exact date at this point in time because of um, their own their own problems, but it'll be shortly after the fourth. Uh, we'll be working uh, this week with them, and next uh, later this week uh, with the, with the police department to schedule mm -hmm. how that's going to occur. Uh, it's pretty obvious to us that uh, given traffic, we're going to have to shut down one side of that road and pave it, and then shut down the other side and pave that. It takes about two hours of set time uh, for uh, the asphalt to harden enough to put traffic on it. So uh, we're going to have one-way traffic either going east, and east or west, uh, depending on, 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 on wh what particular day or where they start. I can tell you they're going to go in and mill the road. The west end of the road has an extremely high center point, mm -hmm. and we've got to take that down. 
because it's 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 dangerous and, and in bad weather people can actually start to slide off the road the, the center the center gradient is just so strong on the other end we'll be um, trying to put a crown on the roadway uh, so as soon as we as we uh, get in there and mill the roadway they'll be in there to pave uh, they're going to solve some of our problems with our maintenance by milling it and they're going to try to do that as soon as possible mm. Is there any anticipation of how long the process is going to take? We're, we're hoping it will take no longer than two to three days, period. Okay. So it, it's possible to pave the entire roadway in one day, uh, <clears throat> but the reality is that uh, it may take two days to, to put the base course down and two days to put the finish course down. So it could be a total of four days. It depends on intermittent rain. It depends on other things. Uh, traffic control, of course, being one of the biggest issues. And we're going to need a number of police officers to make sure that traffic control and people move freely. So, And, and I will tell people if, if you're going to the office park or you're going someplace like that, um, off of Exeter Road, my, our suggestion is right now that when the paving starts because of road closures, you may end up having to go down um, Drakeside Road to get to the office park, mm -hmm. at least for that particular day on that particular side of the road. Yeah. We have detour signs up? Oh, yes, we'll have plenty of signs up and plenty of police officers to direct people. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have one more quick one for the manager. That on the Hampton Falls, Hampton Bridge replacement, the June 24th memo. Yes, ma'am. Have we anything from Hampton Falls or the state on that turnaround? For the towns, Hampton Falls uh, is is taking the lead in that. Um, uh, I've communicated with Hampton Falls that the the board of selectmen here supports that effort. Uh, they're the ones taking the lead with it with the state because it's actually in the town of Hampton yeah. Falls, and we've told I've told them that we'll provide any backup we that they need to get that accomplished. I hope they believe it'll, it'll be accomplished. Apparently, they've talked to a number of people there, and they think the work will be done at the time the bridge is finished which will be sometime in 2018 or 2019. So it's it's going to be a long process. Oh, well, one can hope. One does hope. <laughs> also, okay, thank you. <coughs> I appreciate um, your report. Thank Mr. you, Walsh. sir. <clears throat> Moving on to <clears throat> old business. We have the 2015 goals overview. Mr. Sullivan, you want to join us? Evening. 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 I was asked to come tonight to you know speak to you about the goals that we've discussed a number of times. Mm -hmm. As you recall, back in uh, April, you hosted the meeting with the department mm -hmm. heads to identify a number of goals for the year. We memorialized those in a, a form that was fairly lengthy. Uh, it's important mm -hmm. to note, I think, that many of those Items that were identified during that meeting are in progress and are underway, and, and so many of them are actually completed. So I was asked to, um, after the feedback from the board, a number of your meetings, to consolidate that into a, a more manageable form of more global um, descriptives of that document. I've done that and presented it to you. I've narrowed what was, I think, three or four pages down to four larger bullets. Uh, you've all had it ahead of time, and be happy to answer any questions or take any feedback you have on that. Okay, Mr. Waddell, we start with you. Yeah, I looked this over and it looks pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty good summary of what we talked about with the department heads and everything and what, what we were coming up with our own goals. Uh, and as you said, there are some that are already in progress or some that even have been finished by, by now. <coughs> so I hope that we, we keep track of, you know, the ones, what we've done. And on, our, on our point of view, from an operational point of view, absolutely. Frankly, that other document is something that I, I've been using to guide what we're doing with staff to make sure we're chunking those off for you. But um, for our presentation point of view, more globally, yeah. we, we were asked to put these into these areas. Yeah. But again, don't, don't misunderstand that we're certainly moving forward on, on uh, what was identified in April as, as best we can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think it, it does a good job of... of uh, Do you want to go over the first one there? Yeah. You want me to go by... Read it out? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the board identified the following issues goals for the board to address this year. One, contract negotiations, reach agreement with various unions on terms of new contracts. 
to become more proactive in communicating with the public with regards. If I can jump in, do you want to go through the whole April document that he's doing the, or the, the new summary. one? Oh, the new one. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. The summary on the back. Yeah, my fault. This Improved communications and efficiency within this broad area. The Board of Board of Selectmen is seeking to improve its communication with the community. A review of the various subcommittees assigned by the Board of uh, BOS will be conducted to determine ongoing need, adherence with required standards and functional recommendations, maximize efficiencies where possible. Can we read the second one? Yes. Wait, wait a second, guys. Oh. Um, I have the one that's dated the 20... At the back page of that whole that page. Whole have two. Try to put them in oh, order. Oh, the you. summary. Okay. So he's put it into. I just I wanted have, you to have both documents as we referred to them. Okay, I see what you say. Because I have a couple of questions on a couple of the hmm? individual listings that he put. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Did you want to okay. discuss that at all? Or? No, that's fine. Yeah. I'll read number two. It's the Warren article is Warren articles and research projects. The board has identified a number of research projects which will be assigned to individual departments. These items will be prepared and presented to the public discussions during the year. That process may result in a number of warrant articles for consideration. These topics include, but are not limited to, employment contract, employee contract negotiation, zoning amendments, and strategic planning. Does anyone want to discuss any of that? Uh something that we've been working on quite a bit of it. Right. And Mrs. Wilson, you want to go over the third one? Well, this this isn't broken out by, I, and I appreciate the summary, but this isn't broken out by section because I have <coughs> some questions under well, each section. Why don't section. we go to the third one and then you can go it back. It says infrastructure focus. Ensure the major projects already approved are completed in a timely manner. Exeter Road, paving project, drainage projects, Fire engine pur purchase, etc. Continue to plan for future needs. Does anyone want to discuss parts well, of that? I mean, I have stuff. I have a few points in the whole thing, but okay, we'll come back to yeah. that. And Mr. Bean, you want to go on the fourth one? Number four, uh, Mr. Chairman, bu budget presentation. The focus on the 2016 budget preparation must remain the ongoing highest priority. <clears throat> and would you like to add anything after? No, I, I just just that um, you know we we have the, these highlighted, which are great. But someplace online or something, will we have the, the list of the specifics that go on, you know, the, which you made the highlighted? Yeah, whatever you direct. So you, you want them referenced to each one of the four sections? Yeah, I would think, you know, so the doc? public can go in and if they see this general, global, improved communications and mm -hmm. efficiencies, well, what did, the, what did the board mean by that? You know, what, what specific areas they were they trying to hit to do that? So, you know, rather than... Go we could put that. both documents up online. I, 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 we can absolutely do that. Yeah, I would think that that would be, you know, more. Or you're looking to do subsections under each of these four. Yeah, yeah. So the, you know, the so an A, B, and C, and just like you have here, the, okay. you know, the front. I, I would recommend heard. that we, if we do that, we put the summary page to begin it. Yep. <clears throat> and then the second document, the April seventh, will format that such so that they can see the, the the detail of that. Right. In each one of these things, right, and, it, then, and then it gives the public, sure, you know, an absolutely. opportunity to say, "Hey, those guys, they, they're hitting their their goals, or you know, they're laxing off there, and they're not doing a very good job." So absolutely. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Further questions? No, I think that's a good idea. I think I think the summary gives us a good snapshot of what we're looking at, and the other part will give us that part on on on, on digging a little deeper. Um, I know you've done, a lot of these things that are already well in progress. Um, and uh, it looks good to me. And Mrs. Wilson, what would you like to talk about? Well, the first section, and, and thank you, Jane, because I know there's a lot of work that went into this. Uh, obviously, number one, the contract negotiations are about to, to commence. Uh, but number six, um, oh, number five, conduct a non-union salary study, identify any gaps that exist and plan to address these gaps. I just, a good idea. i just like to know who's going to do it. I am. Oh, you directed good. me to do that. I'm well underway of what that is. And Excellent. So, 
Number six, discussing, discuss pursuing legislative and town meeting approval to borrow from the town trust fund under no interest terms. Current law requires borrowing at prevailing bank rates. Some members feel this is a missed opportunity for the town to address current needs. I am absolutely opposed to doing that. Of course, we'd need to take a vote as a board, but I think that is a dangerous path to follow. So I have flagged item six on there. And I think um, it's important to note that, Mrs. Woolsey, if I may, that um, that first area are from the discussions what board members identified, not, uh, not to indicate that there's a consensus on right. any of that or anything. Right. These are items you discussed and wanted to loop back on to have a conversation mm -hmm. about. And I have looped back on it yeah, and no, identify saying, yeah. that as something that, that I uh, really seriously flag. And then... Uh, also, in number 10, the Selectman Committees, and I have asked Jamie about this, and he is working on the recap or uh, guidelines for us to present to the committees. We'll probably ask for representatives to each of the Selectman Committees to come in and share that with them at some point in time, whenever the chair thinks it's sensible, uh, so that we can make sure, I hope annually, because there will be turnover, that every Selectman Committee has those specific guidelines. I think that will be a tremendous help to forestall problems in the future. Um, under DPW, item four, develop and propose a plan for the vehicle inventory rolling stock to address that vehicles are used for proper functions and improve ongoing maintenance. Not just those two, but for replacement of rolling stock, we are going to have to have some firm figures, some firm evaluations, or I will raise Cain to prevent any purchase of any public works vehicles until we have a serious evaluation of what's going on in those uh, areas. Fire department, uh, I, I rather wondered about this. Number five, collect data on the number of mutual aid services received and supplied and establish an estimated cost for these services. Why would we do that? Mutual aid is part and parcel of what we do with other communities. Yeah, the board had had a discussion about this. This came up in a discussion to try and look at. It was more of a global thing of... Um, is that to the state? Is that to other communities? W what are our resources doing outside of the community was, is my recollection of that, that discussion. Okay. Do uh, sort of crossed over to those two issues. Yeah, it says received and supplied. So when we have every town in the eastern part of the state come for the uh, A block fire, mm -hmm. then we'll be identifying the services provided. Again, to the extent that the data we have will allow us to do that, yes. Okay. Um, police department. We've already taken care of two, which is the parking issues. Once again, the mutual aid services received and supplied, so that's the same as fire. And you've got the same thing in finance. And uh, recreation. Um, I don't see parking lots in there, but we might want to take a look at what we're doing compensating the parking lot staff we're already just, doing that just okay just a thought and <clears throat> under planning continue to open lines of communication between the planning board and the board of selectmen um I would hope we would do that. Compare fee structure and recommend any changes to remain competitive with area communities. Facilitate a discussion of the pros and cons of increasing the use of impact fees on development. Uh, what impact fees? Muni fees or school fees? Again, there was a general discussion about right. looking at that globally. But the other thing we need to check with the planning board, planning department on, is solid waste drainage and unbuildable lots and i have a flag on unbuildable lots for next year um next year's warrant we are wedging building in in mr chairman i just wondered are we going back through this that we already talked about these and, and, and this was things that we're going to discuss and, and stuff and just going over the general goals are we going back to adding i mean we had a big meeting on this mm -hmm. what we added and is this well, if I've that been has been if left out, it should be added because solid waste drainage and unbuildable lots are a big concern in this community, and 
We only get one time a year to address that. Thank you, though, Jamie. Very good job consolidating. Mr. Bean. Mr. Sullivan, great work, and uh, your tenure as the Assistant Town Manager has been uh, magnificent. We appreciate you, um, yeah. what we really do. Uh, uh, to echo uh, Mr. Waddell's comments, not to go back on these issues uh, and whether an individual member is for them or not, I think uh, it's appropriate for these issues to come forward to the town uh, and the town's people and the, and the folks that vote and the people that pay taxes have an opportunity. For example, on the uh, um, undesignated fund balance, uh, there's money in the bank or the trustees' funds. There's $19 million on a project as simple as Exeter Road. Uh, we would have to pay somewhere in the vicinity of $150,000 to $200,000 uh, for interest rates when we have the money sitting in the bank. And to me, that's, uh, that's absurd. And I think the voters need a chance to look at not only that and vote at the ballot and that we support voters coming forward with uh, uh, their own choice. But uh, the other issues as well, and we appreciate you quarterbacking them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if we're going to be tackling that on the tapping trust funds, we need the trustees of the trust funds in here for a discussion. Any further discussion or comments? Moving on, any old business, Mr. Waddell? Thank uh, you, Jamie. Thank you. No, not right Thanks. now. Jamie. Not at this time. No. Any old business, Mrs. Walls? Yes. Um, just a quick question, uh, Fred. You mentioned the Winnicott road bridge and the man sewer manhole and stuff is that i'm assuming is on the south side of where peter ross is building his new building because there were so many problems with pipes and things under the ground when he took over that lot yes. that i'm assuming the problems that were across the street are what we're addressing here they they are on the opposite side from his new building that's the correct. south side right. right and part of that process was to Realign those drainage lines. So that's where Mill that came in through there, and yeah. and uh, because we had a couple of bad storms uh -huh. and a lot of heavy runoff through right. the, uh, the the uh, the bridge. Yeah. I'll call it a bridge. It's really a tunnel. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it washed out around that embankment, and and uh, yeah. uh, but he had completed all his work over there. He's done a tremendous amount of cleaning up in there, but that's where Meadow Pond goes into Eel Creek, and then. It's Under. the end of Eel Creek into the into the marsh. Because I understand that that, that motel on the south mm -hmm. side of Winnicott Road at the intersection was really pretty much breaking apart because of the the water conditions and the soil conditions underneath it. My so understanding is they've done a lot of work to break that. Bad area. Yeah, that's very gratifying. On the south side is a condo. Yeah, the south corner. Yeah, well, there was a... It's a condo. Whatever it's not that a hotel. building was in there, I guess it was having cracks and settling and. It's a problems. large condo, and they've done a yeah. lot of brace work in there to, to fix the problems. Um, also, a memo from uh, Public Works Director on tree work, and he's given us the um, bid that he put out, and the he only got one uh, one bid in, so it's a a um, situation where the where the uh, this does not comply with the Town of Hampton's purchasing policy. Oh, do we need to approve this for him tonight, or is this going to be... That's not a new business. Okay, okay. I'm on old business. See, I'm not <laughs> looking ahead. Okay, I will tackle that then. And I want to mention under old business... This is new business. No, this is old business after goals overview. Yeah. Well... You're mixing them all up. Well, the world is mixed up, Mr. Are Chairman. you finished? <laughs> I don't know yet. Just bear with me for a second. Uh, old business referencing the Department of Revenue Administration and the request for funds. I would suggest that in the future, a phone call to Steve Hamilton up at DRA might be helpful. Um, the DRA uh, response dated June 24th. Uh, to the uh, inquiry, uh, the request from the Board of Selectmen and the uh, uh, challenge from the Budget Committee uh, is as follows. Dear Chairman Griffin, the request for the approval of a transfer of funds from the unreserved fund balance to the Town of Hampton General Fund in the amount of 352241 has been received by the Department of Revenue. There is no statutory provision for such a transfer to be made. 
There is a process to request an overexpenditure of the total 2015 appropriation made pursuant to RSA 32 colon 11. Accordingly, the Department of Revenue Municipal Bureau's record, according to the Municipal Bureau's records, the Town of Hampton's total 2015 voted appropriation is 30,133,341 as adjusted. The Bureau could interpret your request as an overexpenditure request although it appears to mistakenly rely upon the process under RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 2. That provision is a retrospective remedy ap applicable when by some sudden or unexpected emergency, the total voted appropriation in Hampton's case 30,133,341 has already been exceeded. The proper procedures for a prospective overexpenditure is defined in RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 1. Expenditure of appropriations as voted are regulated by statute, RSA 32 colon 10. Significant authority rests with the selectmen in the ability to transfer appropriations to meet changeable conditions. Neither the Budget Committee nor other citizens shall have any authority to challenge the discretion of the governing body in making such transfers. Based on the information provided with the request, it appears that the individual line item transfers have been made. These types of transfers allow for the regular operation of the town's departments, including the Department of Public Works for the immediate future. And by the way, that I believe was a result of a court case brought by uh, former Fire Chief Sullivan, uh, Tom Gillick uh, of the Planning Board and Sandy Buck, challenging the selectmen's failure to uh, keep four fire positions in the 2005 budget and they were ruled against, which uh, gave the selectmen the authority basically to spend the budget as they needed. The sheet attached to your request appears to show amounts in a column titled 2015. It's assumed that this is the amount of actual year-to-date expenditures. It's unclear from the spreadsheet what relationship these have to the amounts that were budgeted. The spreadsheet shows some individual amounts exceed the amount shown in the column titled 2013. While that may be of interest, there is nothing to show that the total 2015 voting voted appropriation has been exceeded. Based on the information you have provided, the request is denied for the following reasons. There is no statutory procedure to request approval of transfer of funds from unreserved fund balance to the general fund to meet individual line item expenditures. Other than the direct procedures and purposes outlined in RSA 32 colon 11, there is no process to request approval of additional expenditures beyond the total 2015 voted appropriation. No overexpenditure of the total 2015 voted appropriation has occurred to date that would trigger the use of RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 2 and the provisions of RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 1 have not been properly followed. The following is non-binding technical advice provided pursuant to RSA 21J colon 24. When unusual circumstances arise, an analysis can be completed by the town to determine if and by what amount the total vote ap voted appropriation will be exceeded. At that time, the request for authority to overspend the total voted appropriation by a certain amount may be forwarded to the Bureau for consideration and the process will need to follow the procedures contained within RSA 32 colon 11 Roman 1, including review and approval in writing by a majority of the Municipal Budget Committee. Assistance for those requests is, is at, and he gave the, uh, uh, the address where you can go online. Um, I, I think it would save us a lot of time and effort if we perhaps checked, especially in something regarding the Department of Revenue Administration, if we checked with them at first, I will say that uh, Steve Hamilton did a great job uh, specifically uh, helping out. I, what he's saying essentially is that if we have a legal judgment that forces us to overexpend the budget, which is why we have that extra five million whatever sitting there, um, <coughs> that is the occasion where we would apply. Mr. Chair. Okay, here, one moment. I would like to say Mrs. Wilsley has uh, made an assertion that there were no phone calls made. Am I correct in understanding I that didn't there were? Yes, that's what you said. I didn't say. I said well, that's what you nice said. You suggested that there be phone calls yes, made. Yes, I didn't I like say there were none made. I would like to point out to you that there were phone calls that's made. That's all right. That's good. That's what I would like. 
You made that suggestion. Yes. And is that not what was done, Mr. Welch? There were phone calls made. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And, and may I say, Mr. Chairman, yes. that uh, <clears throat> analysis of Mr. Uh, Hamilton's letter mm -hmm. indicates <sighs> that it is not possible for the town to ever apply to use surplus. And the reason for that is that the $30 million appropriation includes all warrant articles. Mm -hmm. We specifically talked about that for about a half an hour on the phone. And his assertion was until every penny mm -hmm. that is in the budget is spent or can be ratified as spent because contracts are out for that mm -hmm. and the money is gone, yeah. until then, no one may apply for any use of transfer of funds, which means in this state that no one can apply for the use of transferred funds because no one can spend the entire budget plus all warrant articles yeah. on a guarantee. So, quite <laughs> frankly, having done this several times with the Department of Revenue in the past and other commissioners, uh, I have to tell you, I don't think they know what they're talking about. Well, and that's that's from the statute, not from Mr. Uh, Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to make a comment. Yes, please do. We all had that memo. We all read that memo. And I don't feel the really need to have it read to me again and to be lectured on somebody's interpretation of it in the, in the meeting. I think we all had it. We all, we all read it. We all maybe, you know, can talk about it in the meeting. But I, I don't need a lecture on the uh, interpretation of it and how I should interpret it or how it should be interpreted. There's it many interpretations of laws. I just wanted to make that comment. And that's why he's there, to be a tool for this board to use. Mr. Bridal. All set. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Welch for his initiative in uh, pursuing this with uh, the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and uh, your letter, when we could read your letter, uh, is uh, especially cogent. Uh, unless you are on Mars, uh, it was the worst weather uh, in history in New Hampshire. And uh, that's an extraordinary event. Uh, the state of uh, New Hampshire uh, sucks $200 million a year out of this very town. And if you will look at the financials tonight from Director Polmium, there is not one dime of shared revenue on that line. There never has, or there hasn't been recently during my tenure. It's not going to happen this year. These people in Concord can't balance a budget. They can't work together. We have had Director Rose from another department at this state uh, sandbag us on testimony with Next Taylor that has cost this town seven figures. Uh, we could get an attorney and we could challenge this other director that sits in Concord on how to run our town, but we're not doing that. And I would also like to thank uh, Chairman Latimer in her letter to the Budget Committee. And these are rational people uh, trying to run a town in a, uh, a savage winter that savaged the budget. And we may be able to patch it and mend it. But we've got infrastructure falling apart. We've got union contracts. We've got people that live in this town that have to travel on these roads. But this going to the Wizard of Oz in Concord and getting these letters back that were open to interpretation, I, I would maintain that uh, Chairman Latimer, that you, Chairman Griffin, and that Mr. Welch have acted as uh, gentle people, and you've acted professionally, and you've com communicated with these folks. And quite frankly, uh, I don't see an adversarial position, and I think the lines of communication that Mr. Welch exploited were sufficient in that he was doing his job and the vote was four to one. Naturally, Selectman Woolsey, and rightfully so, is, is the dissenting vote on that. And uh, she has further added her comment tonight, but uh, there are no bad guys in this. There were no problems. There were no mistakes. This was just following the rule of law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Wizard of Oz can Moving stop Moving on to new business. To First is the transfer of tax deed parcels to Conservation Commission. <coughs> land at tax map 7, lot 3. Land at tax map 235, lot 22-C. Land at tax map 998, lot 301. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, um, by action of the Board of Selectmen at the request of the collector of taxes, these three wet parcels were acquired by the town as open land in accordance with the vote of the annual town meeting, uh, which was uh, under Article 28 of the March 12, 1994 town meeting. Uh, you are directed to transfer those parcels of land to the Conservation Commission for preservation. I'll so move this that will we accept. accomplish that. Second. And this is taking of the land by tax lien? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Absolutely. Any other questions? Nope. All those unanimous. <clears throat> Next. Oh. 
chief of police has never happened with this one. No, oh, well, the dog warrant. The RSA 466 colon 14 dog warrant. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, uh, the statutes of New Hampshire require you to issue a dog warrant at this time uh, for the 413 current dogs that are not licensed within the town. Um, and the, the, this is to be issued to the chief of police, and he is to return his report of the licensing or failure to license and court summonses uh, for those who do not license by August 31st mm. of this year. It's a statutory duty. So what do we have to do? Make uh, a sign the warrant. And make a motion and sign the warrant. I'll make a motion we sign the warrant. I'll second, Rusty. All those in favor? That's in very sad. It is. Purchasing policy waiver section 718-4B2 <coughs> tree work. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, um, we've been out to bid. This is a, one of those bids that runs on for multiple pages, mm. no matter what you do. Yeah. Um, we had two bidders, um, and uh, we, the, the Public Works Department has requested that you award it to the low bidder, Bill. Um, which is oh, I don't think Urban I Tree. Those, Bill. Um, they are the recommended the recommended uh, bidder here uh, to be awarded, uh, but there were only two bids of the three bids required. Mm. Um, and I, I must tell you, and just to give you an idea, this was just the consolidation of one page of oh, the bidding yeah. document. It, it's quite comprehensive. Uh, we we have not been able to successfully attract uh, three bidders for this particular function for some time because of the amount of information that's required in the bid. You want a motion to waive the bid requirement? And to award to um, Urban, Tree, Urban Service. Tree Service. And I have a question, but I yeah. will so move. Second. And we have comments, Mrs. Wilsley? There are at least three trees in our beautiful little park at Five Corners that are dead that need to go. Will any potential work like that? You know, I, I, it breaks my heart to see the, I know. the little parks go <clears throat> untended, as it were. We have one at the end of uh, two trees at the end of Lock Road as well, a little right. park there. And those trees are slated to be taken down. Yeah. In, in the Little River Road Park, too, you think? That's correct. That would yeah. be wonderful. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, we want to take those down before uh, so branches the start falling off and someone so gets So the injured. healthy trees can grow, too. Yes, ma'am. I That's appreciate correct. that. Any other comments? All those in favor? Unanimous. And <clears throat> the renewal of fire dispatch agreement for Hampton Falls. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, the, we have a, a uh, dispatch agreement between the fire department in Hampton Falls and the fire department in Hampton. It's been uh, <clears throat> approved on the warrant, uh, Article 33 of the March 17, 1990 meeting uh, that we go into that agreement. And um, it is due for renewal in the year 2016. <clears throat> Excuse me. Before I approach the uh, fire department or the selectman's office in Hampton Falls to inquire about whether or not they wish to uh, renew the agreement, I felt it was appropriate to come before this board to find out if, if you wish to renew the agreement. So you just want a consensus, not necessarily a motion. Uh, a consensus would be great, so that we can get this. We, there's a set formula for yeah. it and everything. So and the length of the contract generally it's, it's is five years. Okay, Mr. Waddell. And it's always been positive. We're working with them, and yes, so well. No, no, it's been it's been very positive for us and for them. Okay. So we have a con uh, your. How do you feel about that? Good, Mr. Bradley. No, I've. Uh, I've worked with this before when I was working at the fire department. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very good working relationship with the Hampton Falls Fire Department, and uh, I think it should continue. Mrs. Wolsey. No problem. I can sense. And I also <laughs> <laughs> got me on that one. Uh, next, the approval of the 2016 Capital Improvement Plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, every year we're required to uh, have the department heads gather up a large compendium of information, <coughs> excuse me, um, 
for the uh, town's capital improvement uh, committee, which is under the planning board. And uh, we have done that. We've issued a copy to the Board of Selectmen. And what I'd like to do is pass it along to the capital improvement committee so that they can start their work for the year 2016. And hopefully we can get this done in time before the budget committee and the selectmen start looking at budgets. Is, do we board. have a, um, a person here that's on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bean, did you have something you'd like to? I concur with Mr. Wilch. Other comments? I would just like to say, you do this every five years. We do this every year. year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we put a lot of work into this. We do. And it's gone through with, with projecting what should be done in the future to lay out capital improvement. One of the things that we, we looked at very seriously was um, the you. board's establishment of goals. It's okay. And in that goal establishment, you had you wanted to know what roads we should do and when and uh, what sewer projects we should do and when, et cetera, et cetera. And we tried to lay, have the Public Works Department lay those out. We had the same with the Fire Department, Police Department, Recreation, and so forth. And we have 150-plus pages of material uh, that relate to uh, capital expenditures and improvements mm -hmm. in the community. And a center section that's probably somewhere in the order of 35 to 50 pages that deals just with the year 2016 and forward uh, to 2021. <clears throat> I think the departments have done a good job. Uh, the question is, what can we afford? And that's why this board has someone on that committee to sit there and say, no, we can't afford all of that, so we need to cut some of that back. Uh, and the committee has been very good in doing that and balancing out the appropriations uh, in coming years. The reason I'm hoping to get this to them is so that we can have some semblance of order. Uh, last year, the Long Range Capital Expenditures Report was filed in late January, early February, which means it really doesn't do anything for the budget process. And I'm hoping that if we get this to them early, that they can incorporate that and, and get their report out in time for this board and for the Budget Committee to consider those recommendations when the budget is being prepared and, and talked about in hearings. So, so in the past, has it been followed, you know, ha has it been helpful to the process or, I mean? It hasn't because it's been completed so late. Uh, it's important that we could be completed before the Budget Committee starts their hearings and before you start looking at your budget totals. Uh, I realize there's a lot of information in there that has to be digested. Um, but it's important, and we can't, we can't have any of the funds that we collect for schools off of new buildings. We can't, we can't do that if this process doesn't proceed. So it's important that we move it forward and try to get that accelerated to the point where we continue to receive funds to help us with school costs, and uh, we, can, we can start looking at how we budget for capital improvements that are, or have been falling behind for years. Okay. That's been what the history of it has been. The history of has been that in the past, Tom Gillick always did it, the whole thing himself, and um, you know it just it had it had no legs to it. You know, right. there just weren't the right. It wasn't his fault. I'm just saying he stepped up to do it. Yeah. So for many years, it wasn't effective. Well, that that that's my point is that that if it's being done. I would like to see it be done so that it's effective. We agree. You know, it, mm -hmm. and, and, and that it has, that, yeah. that if, if people are doing the work, putting <laughs> this together, this, da, 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 that then it's looked at as an effective right. and, and, you know, so good document. So probably for the last three years, that's what the different boards have been trying to do, mm -hmm. is to make it more effective. Okay. So it's <clears> not something that, you know, yeah. we've been working on it. I think this board's been very diligent in, in trying to get uh, through that process because I think you fully understand the impact of the things that we've been talking about. And uh, we'd like to have that appreciated by the rest of the community as they understand this process as we go through it. So I'm hoping the committee will go through it in a fairly rapid order so that they can <coughs> start issuing reports and comments and so forth and the planning board can hold their public hearing. Mr. Bridle. No, I think it's good we get it out early, get it to them, and hopefully, like you said, we'll do it in a timely manner. And so we can actually have some, some uh, usefulness from it. Right. So, 
Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Wilsley? I think the capital improvement plan has been useless. Uh, I think uh, the copy that I received with 300 pages uh, showed a 2014 column that has nothing to do with this year or next year, uh, unless that was old information. Uh, you know, 2014 is all gone, bye bye, and 2015 is done too. So some of the old stuff needs to be removed, and this is going to the planning board, mm -hmm. which refuses to assess impact fees. Mm -hmm. You're talking about all the things that need to be done, and they refuse to assess muni impact fees. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a waste of paper. Mr. Bean. Uh, I support Mr. Welch's efforts in getting that over in the comments of uh, the other two selectmen. Yeah. So do we need a... Actually, just takes a consensus of the board to do it. So I, I think, think a formal vote is necessary. We have a consensus. Okay. Um, commencement of contract renewal with Comcast. <laughs> <sighs> the current contract is uh, three years old. It's due to expire in two years. Uh, I at least appreciate the fact that they have sent in a request in advance of that uh, expiration. Um, as I recall, you have been negotiating two years before I arrived. Uh, it's a six-year process. Took forever. Six or seven-year process yep. uh, to get a five-year contract done. Uh, so um, yep. maybe we can cut two years off of that and actually get a five-year contract done in five years. But <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping, but we need to start that process because uh, time is, is running. I hope uh, Mr. Gerald is keeping track of how much the lawyers get paid. Too, too much. Yeah, because it's, it's an, an endless bill that just keeps going on. Mr. Waddell? <coughs> uh, no, I think we should get it started and get it done effectively. Yeah, you it's, it's important. Mrs. Wolsey. Yeah, but I think we need to get a f focus, maybe a little bit on what w we want. Yes. On there, yep. so at some point in time, whether we're guided by council or whatever, a lot of useless stuff on that table. What I will do is I will make a copy of the current contract and put it in your mailboxes, mm -hmm. so that you have it, you can review it, and certainly give us any questions and comments that you have, so that we can forward that into the yeah. process. And when do we see the lawyer that we're getting that we're paying? Oh, <laughs> so far, we're not paying anybody. Good. Um, <laughs> and I, frankly, I'd like to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, I think we need to contact Comcast and say we're willing to sit down and have a preliminary discussion mm -hmm. yep. about what should occur, and uh, then we can determine whether or not we need to hire a $300 an hour lawyer to look at paper, <sighs> which I really don't like to do. But Mr. Bean. I have no comment, sir. Okay. So um, do we... You don't need a motion or anything. Like I, I would. What I'm going to do, Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the board, is I'm going to co contact Comcast with Town Council and uh, ask them to come in and, and sit with us for a while and tell us what what their intentions are and what they would like. And at the same time, I will send you copies of the contracts. You can give me feedback, and uh, we'll see how difficult this process is going to be. Mm -hmm. Other new business, Mr. Waddell? Nope. Mr. Bridal? Nope. Mrs. Wilson? Yep. Uh, we met Thursday evening. I I'm, I'm, was very sorry that it was without the uh, ability to telecast on cable, but we reviewed the bids for solid waste and recycling and transportation, et cetera. And I have a question. Uh, we did get a spreadsheet. June 1st memo from Director Jacobs, Public Works. Um, in the previous 12 months, this community has disposed of 2,715 tons of recyclables. The year before that, we disposed of 2,726 tons. The waste management proposal being considered will hold to the zero per ton disposal fee as long as there is a commodity market collapse provision in the contract that would allow both parties to revisit the zero, zero floor feature of the agreement in the event the blended value were to ever fall below $65 a ton. The Eco Main proposal does not request this provision and will hold the zero cost per ton for all five years on the contract. Um, do we have that commodity or will we have the commodity Market collapse provision or what? No, we will not. 
It's a zero fee for five years. That's okay. it. That's it? That's it. Okay. And that is the same, then, as the Ecomain proposal? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. And the rebid um, changed those provisions. We were very firm when we rebid this. We had, um, we had told all the bidders that in, in accordance with our bidding policy, no one might change the conditions of the bid. They had to bid on what was in the, was in the written bid. Mm. And they all did that, and that charge is not there. Okay. Well, I just, I'm not familiar with that clause, but it interested me enough to... Uh, it interests us, too. ...to ask. Closing comments. Motion to adjourn. Everybody, ha everybody have a safe and happy 4th of July. Yeah. You got well, military time. Adjourn at what time? 946. 846. 846. 2044. 2044. <laughs> Thank you. Out.